The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! You think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Well, I must have not been paying attention. Trying to get it posted on Facebook. Can you pull me up? Sure. Like a lot. Like a lot. Oh, I know what happened. I was pulling up the wrong one. <laughs> I was like, you are really high. You should get your ears checked. It's me. I wish I was really high. How's that? Sounds good to me. I like it. There we go. Numbers perhaps are not my forte. You're went, on headset four, and I was dealing with headset three. I went to Lawrence High School. I count on my fingers, so don't feel bad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I love, like, older people who get all worked up. I have a few in my family that get all worked up when I say something about Lawrence or Lawrence High School. Oh, no. And they're like, I went to Lawrence High School, and it was fine. I'm like, yeah, but that was in 1950. It's a little different now. Yeah. What was your class size back then? Right. Five? Good. No offense. Tom's hurtful comment of the day. Yeah. I started doing that. I started doing Tom's hurtful comment of the day on Facebook. Oh. I ran out of hurtful things to say. I guess I'm just oh. not as mean as I thought I was. <clears throat> ba, ba, ba. Oh, boy. Oh, ba, ba, ba. oh boy. <laughs> Oh, new lyrics. <laughs> Definitely not ready for that one. <laughs> All right. We should probably get the show on the road. Sure. What do you think? I'm should we start ready. the show? I just listen to Mel for an hour. Yeah. Let me pull up my notes. Mm-hmm. All right. Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. Still not sure why. Hi, here at the <laughs> here at the Studio Twenty One Podcast Cafe, high atop Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. We're working on a couple of possible debates for the end of October. We are working on a possible debate with State Representative Colleen Gary and her opponent George Bogue. Um, Colleen Gary is a Democrat. I have always supported Colleen Gary, even though she's a Democrat, because she's one of the more conservative Democrats in the state. Um, but she's being challenged by a guy more conservative, George Bogue. And um, I've reached out. George has said yes. Um, I originally reached out to uh, Colleen Gary about a month ago, and she said, can you let me know when we get closer? And, of course, now that we're closer, no, she's not returning my, te- my messages. So uh, we're hoping she's going to get back to us. We'll have a great debate for the state representative seat being held right now in Drake It by Colleen Gary. I'm also working on trying to get a debate in the state rep race between Joe Finn in North Andover and, oh my goodness, I can't remember the woman's name was running against him, and I, I'm so sorry. I think her name is Ramos. Her last name is Ramos. A- Adriana Ramos. I'm sorry it took me a few seconds for that to, to, to click in. Um, so the, as, as far as I know, in the Merrimack Valley, those are the only two contested seats. All of the other state rep, state senate seats were all decided in the primary. You had Estella Reyes in the primary. She's got nobody facing her in the final. You had um, uh, what was the, uh, you had, uh, Fr- uh, Francisco Polino versus Marcos Devers and Lawrence, and that was decided in the primary. There's no Republican in that race. I'm pretty sure there's no Republican in the state Senate race uh, that was just won in the primary by Pavel Payano. There were three people in that race. So most of the races have already been decided. And by the way, that's the reason why everyone should vote in a primary. I mean, if, if you're active and you know what a state rep is, like if you're stupid, please don't vote. But if you know what these things are, if you know what a state rep is and a state rep does and you care about what the state is doing, uh, you should be voting in primaries for sure because that's where most of the decisions get made. Um, I think it was John Kennedy's father once who said, I don't care who wins an election as long as I can, as long as I can choose the primary winners. And he would go out and he would support someone on both sides of the aisle. And they would both get nominated. And then it wouldn't matter because he'd have a friend on either side. And no matter who won, wins now, he wins. So um, 
You should be voting in a primary, but we have two seats locally that are not settled yet, uh, and that is the Drakeit race, uh, which encompasses, I think, Drakeit and Tingsboro, and the North Andover race, which encompasses North Andover, Boxford, Georgetown, Groveland, and I think Ipswich and Newberry, I think. Um, and I know that Joe, uh, Joe Finn is working. He's a Republican. Uh, he's working really hard. It's going to be a very interesting race because the person who holds that seat now, Christina Minacucci, who uh, she's a lovely person, um, but a horrible state rep. She doesn't get back to anybody. She doesn't call back the press. She doesn't call back her constituents. In the last year and a half, I've had more complaints in my office from people saying, hey, I can't get in touch with Christina Minacucci. I've left her three messages. I've sent her two emails. She just doesn't get back to me. And I'll call her because I know her, and she's not getting back to me either. So, And she, by the way, she's a Birkenstock-wearing left-wing lunatic. She's for partial birth abortion up to fifth grade if she had her way. Um, that whole district has been redistricted. It's all been changed now. It used to be Lawrence, parts of Methuen, and most of North Andover. And now it's going to be what I told you, um, North Andover, Boxford, Georgetown, Groven. So it went from a predominantly Democrat district to um, not a predominantly Republican district, but kind of a 50-50, but maybe a little bit more Republican than Democrat, maybe like 55%, uh, depending on who turns out. So Joe Finn actually has a shot in that race. And um, he's been working now since April. He's been knocking doors since April because he knocked on my door. And um, he said, hey, do you have a couple of minutes to talk about the state rep race? And I said, how much time you got? Because it's going to take a lot more than... Just going to take a couple, a lot more than just a couple of minutes. Um, and he came in and we talked. I have not met Adriana Ramos yet, although I, she probably doesn't like me because I had her thrown out of the, um, the middle school. She was having an illegal fund, an illegal um, campaign rally at the North Andover Middle School, and it's probably not her fault. She, did, she probably never, she's never run for, before, so she doesn't know the, the, the rules. But the elected officials in North Andover, including the town moderator, certainly know the rules, and they were there. Um, so I had to actually call the police and say, hey, they're having an illegal rally at the North End of a Middle on school property. And they went over and they broke it up. So, but I have nothing against her. Um, you know, I don't know where she stands on just about anything because I, I've gotten a couple of mailings from her that, you know, I'm for education. Yay. Well, you know, everyone's for education. I'm for public safety. Yay. Everybody's for public safety. So <coughs> when I get campaign literature that doesn't tell me anything, doesn't say anything specific, like what would you do for education, um, then I really, I, I, I have nothing, right? I, I, there's nothing that I can tell you about this woman other than I know that her and her husband own a daycare center in Haverhill because I have a friend that works there. And they tell me that she's like a really wonderful person. They love her to death. So um, it's going to be interesting to see if we can get the two of them here. Uh, I am supporting Joe Finn, but as you know from watching my debates, you watch my debates, you can't tell who I support because when I do a debate, it's not about me trying to help my candidate. It's about educating you as to who the candidates are and letting you make your own decision. So we're hoping we have those two debates. Today, uh, before we get to my topic, I want to thank our sponsors, McLennan Real Estate, Century 21. We have to have Matt come in because the real estate market is changing day to day. Uh, Lazy River Products in Drakeit, best cannabis in the Merrimack Valley. And by the way, best prices in the Merrimack Valley, too. I've not been there myself, but I do send friends because I have friends that live in Drakeit, and they go pick up for me. Marsan and Sun Construction. I'm still waiting to hear back from Ronnie Marsan. I, I actually helped get him a job um, doing a rebuild, and then we haven't heard back from him. I know he's been really busy. So if you want Marsan and Sun Construction to do any construction for you, you got to get him now before the, before the cold weather gets here because he's really busy. EIS, Investigation and Gun Trading. Joe Solomon who is one of the, one of the owners, uh, minority owner of um, EIS Investigation and Gun Training, called me yesterday and said, can you have somebody come by my house and pick some stuff up for you? I have some things for TMF when you feed the homeless. We, we do our TMF feeds the homeless every Wednesday night. And I sent Nancy by because she lives in Methuen and I don't. So Nancy went by and picked, she picked up like 10 brand new, very expensive coats. And we gave them all out last night. And you should have seen how happy some of the homeless people were. We pulled up to Water Street, and there were three homeless people there. And it was cold last night. Like, it was really frigid. And they were shivering. And Nancy got out of the car and said, boy, have I got something for you. And she pulled out the coach. You should have seen their, their eyes light up. So Joe Solomon, former chief in Methuen, thank you for that. Uh, it makes a big difference. Uh, also want to thank Borelli's Deli, where I'm going to get my hot sausages after the show and my 
butternut squash ravioli, Tomo and Shaken Seafood, Clear Path for Veterans, New England, Sullivan Insurance, a free shout out for them, AFC Urgent Care, we're going to have Lisa back in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, uh, Pleasant Valley Landscaping, make sure you call Dave Id Consoli, he's looking for workers, and a free shout out for JG's Ice Cream. Also, a, 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 a big shout out to my friend Dawn at Dawn Sign Tech in North Andover. She doesn't need the business, so if you need a sign... You probably should. You, know, you can call her and see if you can get on her on her on her schedule. But she's she's booking now like six to eight months out. That's how busy she wow. is. But she does support the program and she does buy ads in the paper, not because she needs the business, but because she likes to support what we do. So we want to thank Dawn for that. So uh, today, I, what I really want to do is I want to go over some of the ballot questions in Massachusetts. Um, there's four of them, and um, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to do this closer to the election. But I'm not sure if we're going to be having those debates because I'm still waiting to hear from candidates. And I didn't want to wait till the end and not be able to do it because all of a sudden we have two debates that we, didn't, we, were, we weren't expecting. Um, there are four ballot questions in Massachusetts. There's two in New Hampshire. Now, next week, I'm going to have Dave Garafalo from right here at Two Guys Smoke Shop, who's a New Hampshire resident, and he's active in New Hampshire politics. And I know, this, I know last week I said today we were going to do New Hampshire politics. Um, but we're going we're gonna to do that for next week with Dave because I could come in here and I could give you my opinion on New Hampshire politics, but it would be an outsider's view. And I don't think that's fair to the people in New Hampshire. The people in New Hampshire should have an insider's view. So I thought maybe if we have Dave here, I could ask questions. We could chat about it. I could ask questions as an outsider in case you're a brand new voter and you don't know anything about the candidates. And then Dave can fill us in on who the candidates are, who he likes, who he doesn't like, and why. And I thought that would be fun. So if I have time today, I'll get to the New Hampshire ballot questions. If not, we'll roll that into next week's show. Ballot question number one. Very simple stuff here. We know that Democrats love to punish the rich. They love to say they're punishing the rich. But 90 t- 99 times out of 100, when they say they're going to punish the rich, they're really punishing all of us. Because the rich will always find a way around whatever tax code you're going to write. Question one is to, in- to, to implement a millionaire tax on anyone that makes a million or more. Now, a million dollars sounds like a lot of money to people like me who made like $20,000 last year, right? A million dollars is a lot of money. But when I add up what the Valley Patriot did last year, right, and for operating costs, everything, for gross gross sales, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of $250,000 that we raise, that we, that, that we generate all year, right? Now, our expenses are high and all that. You know, we, we have to pay drivers and the printer and, and all the other stuff, pay for the office, Um but if I was a little bit more successful with the Valley Patriot, I could see, I could see the Valley Patriot grossing a million a year, and then I would get hit with a 5 to 9% tax. So what is my incentive as a small business owner to work harder, to make more, if they're going to take more, if I make more? And this is just the Democrat, it's just another Democrat scheme to try and hold down the economy. It's just another Democrat scheme to take money out of the hands of individuals who have personal liberty and freedom and property and take it away from them so that they can use it for their stupid programs that they're going to that they're going to pass they're going to spend and will make zero difference in anybody's life so question 1 is should we have a millionaire tax should it it's a 5 to 9% tax for anybody making a million or more so i i asked Siri before we went on the air because i have i went to Lawrence so i got to do math on my fingers as i said and I didn't know what 9% of a million dollars. It's $90,000, according to Sari. It's 90000 So if you, if you grossed a million dollars last year, and by the way, I think that's joint too. Like if you and your wife both, so if you make $500,000 on your business and your wife's got her own business and it's 500000 now on top of all the other taxes and all the other fees and all of everything else, they're going to stock you with $90,000 in taxes, which by the way, as I said, the millionaires are not going to pay. They're not going to pay it. They're going to find a loophole. They're going to donate money to some charity and they're going to write it off. They're going to find some, some global warming. They'll buy a Tesla or they'll put um, solar panels on their house or something that will give them the equivalent of that $90,000 back. And what's interesting here is that the Democrats are the ones that build all the loopholes into the tax laws. Then they do stupid shit like this where they say they're going to tax millionaires knowing that they're not going to tax millionaires. Because once this passes at the ballot, you know and I know 
that six months to a year from now, that million dollar tax is going to be a half a million dollar tax. If you make half, they'll amend it to, instead of you pay more taxes, if you make a million, it's going to be half a million. And then the next thing is going to be a quarter of a million. And within five years, you know and I know we're all going to be paying that tax. Because the, the revenue that they're expected to raise, the government is expected to raise by stealing more money from the public, they're not going to get it. They're not, you know, they, in the 80s, I, I had this exact same argument with people in the 80s. Back in the, in the late 80s, there was what the Democrats wanted to institute what they called a luxury tax. And they wanted to find a way to punish rich people and find a way to take rich people's money where it wouldn't hurt people at the bottom. And they instituted a luxury tax on yachts. And I remember this very vividly because I remember having real, doing some really, really tough radio programs back then on that topic. And at the end of the day, they implemented the, the yacht tax, which was exorbitant, right? Because if you own a yacht, you've got a lot of money, right? Here's what ended up happening. Millionaires in the United States stopped buying yachts in the United States. They started buying yachts in Greece. They started buying yachts in Russia. They started buying yachts in Norway and in other countries. And what happened was all of the yacht building companies in the United States, all the electricians, all the carpenters, all the plumbers, I mean, a yacht is like a floating hotel, right? All of the people who build the yachts, they were not a business. Don't believe me? Look at Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Look at what happened in the 80s to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and how, and how it totally devastated the entire economy of southern New Hampshire, all right? So, so when you're looking at, when Democrats, when any politician, let's, let's not isolate it to Democrats, when any politician is looking to punish someone, or they're looking to raise revenue from people that they are going to claim, it's not going to be a big deal. They never pay. The rich are rich for a reason. It's because they're good with money. They know how to hide money. They know how to get around taxes. And so just like with the yacht tax, if, the, if Massachusetts implements this million-dollar tax, the millionaires will find loopholes. They won't pay it. And then they will have to expand it from a million to half a million and from half a million to a quarter of a million. And the next thing you know, people like you and I paying, making twenty and $30,000 a year will be paying an additional 49% tax because that's the only way they're going to be able to make it up. The money is not at the top end because you're never going to get it. And the money is obviously not at the bottom end because people at the bottom have no money to take. The real money is in the middle, and the politicians know it. But they can't say, we need a tax on the middle class because the middle class votes. And they vote in larger numbers than poor and rich people. So they can't say that. They say, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. We're just going to tax the millionaires. You heard Bernie Sanders Decade after decade, we have to stop the millionaires and the billionaires, the millionaires and the billionaires, until he became a millionaire, and suddenly it's the billionaires and the trillionaires, they're the ones that have to pay. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? And people buy this shit. That's what's really funny. Like, I, I, to me, politics is like, it's a comedy, because I, I listen to all these stupid, retarded things that politicians say, and I go... There can't be one person on the planet that believes that. And then I'll go on Facebook and go, holy shit, there's a whole bunch of people out there that actually believe that. It's like I'm on the planet of mutants where people just believe things that are like so outrageously ridiculous after they lie and proven that they've lied and get caught lying. And then they lie again and get caught lying and they lie again and they get caught lying again. And then they make more claims and people go, oh yeah, that sounds great. And I just shake my head going... Like, we've lost this country. Like, we're devolving as a culture where we can't even distinguish. We believe what we want to believe, but we can't distinguish between fact and fiction. It, it, it's, it's, it's really bizarre to me. So I'm voting no on question one. Uh, quite frankly, I don't care if it said they were only going to tax trillionaires and they were only going to tax them $5. I'm still voting no. You know why? I would rather that 5 to 9%, that $90,000, be in the hands of a private citizen who will spend it and generate money for the economy than give it to the government who will give it to illegal aliens, Ukraine, Mexico, Jordan, Egypt, South America, and every other country in the world. I mean, if you think about what our Congress has done in the last few years, we can't secure our own border, but we're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine to secure their border? So why do, why do we want to give these people any more money? Like even another dollar. Now, I love paying my taxes, right? When I get my tax bill, I love paying my taxes because then I pay it 
and it's gone, and I got nothing hanging over my head. I the only thing in my life that I worry about, like even a little bit, is finances. Right? I don't worry. I have no problems in my personal life, believe it or not, for the, for the last eight years. Um, I have no problems in my personal life. I've got no drama in my personal life. I've got no problems at home. I've got no problems with my business. I only worry about finances. That's pretty much the only thing at my age that, that I worry about. But I'll tell you what. I would much rather have $1 be in the hand of any member of the public than be in the hand of, of, of any politician much less the state of Massachusetts, because we know what they're going to do with it. We know what they're going to do with it. All right, question number two. We had Dr. Gomer here last week. Was that last week already? I mean, it yeah. seems like so long ago now, right? Time flies. We had Dr. Gomer in here, and I didn't really understand this. The way he explained it to me, and believe me, if you go online and you look this up, it's, it's very confusing. I consider myself a relatively bright guy. And I read all of the um, things that were push out, put out on ballot question number two and still didn't understand a word of it. Then we had Dr. Goma here, and he put it in pretty simple terms. If you have dental insurance, you have a deductible. If you don't use that deductible at the end of the year, question two, you get it back. So if question two passes, in everybody who has dental insurance, and I have Delta Dental, and I have used my deductible because I've, I've had to have several teeth you worked on, but if I waited a year and I didn't do that this year, I would get that money back. That would go back. That would come back to me. So on question number two, it's um, getting back your deductible for dental coverage, which is going to also, by the way, hit the insurance companies. Love that. Love that. Anything that takes a dollar out of an insurance company's pocket is I'm okay with that. Uh, we'll see. We got 18 minutes left to cover two things. I think we can. I think we can pull that off. Do you think we could? Because when we get to question four, I've got like an hour worth of material for you, so don't worry about it. Question number three. So, by the way, question one, if, you, if you're just joining us, question one is the millionaire tax to increase taxes on people that make a million dollars or more from five to nine percent, which comes out to about 90 grand. Question two is getting your deductible back on your dental insurance, which to me seems like a pretty good idea unless there's something here we don't know about. If you're against that, please email me and tell me why you're against it. Maybe there's something hidden. I'm not sure. Question three, it's, it's kind of convoluted, question three. It's to prohibit automated or self-checkout for alcohol, but it's also to increase the number of alcohol licenses businesses can have. It seems to me that should be two different ballot questions because I'm not too sure I'd be happy with voting to increase the number of liquor licenses because, quite frankly, the, you, you, can't, you can't spit in Lawrence without hitting a liquor store. Like, it's literally every half a block. You walk down Essex Street, you walk Broadway, it's like every half a block there's a liquor store. And every time you turn around, there's a new liquor store going up. Uh, To me, liquor stores, strip joints, cannabis stores, fine. They're legal, fine. it's It's a legal product. They pay taxes. They should have every right to exist. I'm not too sure about expanding the numbers of the. Like, would you want to expand the number of strip clubs in your town? I don't think I'd want that. Unless it was going to be like right next door and I could go downstairs. But I'm not a big fan of strip clubs anyway. Um, I mean, w- would you want that? Would you want to increase the number of cannabis shops in your town? Would you want to increase the number of liquor stores in your town? I'm not really sure I'm for that. But then they lump it in with prohibiting automatic and self-checkout of alcohol. So kids can't go to a liquor store, self-check themselves out, and not have somebody go, hey, wait a minute, you're not... Right? So this is what politicians do. They work. What they really want is the second part. Right? They really want to increase the numbers. But they know if they just promote that, it'll probably fail. So they add in, well, but this bill will also do is it'll stop people underage from self-checkout at a liquor store, which will stop underage drinking, or at least it'll, it'll prohibit it in some ways. And since most people will be for the first one, and most people aren't for the second one, they'll promote the first part. And all the commercials will be about stopping minors from getting alcohol, and that one will most likely pass. I'm not too sure how I'm voting on that. I may just leave it blank. I'm either going to vote no or I'm going to leave it blank. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that. Uh, if, if you know more about question three and you want to email me some information about what you think it will do and you want to change my mind, I'm an open-minded guy. I'll be more than happy to take that one. So now we've got 15 minutes left to do one, and I've got about an hour oh, and a half boy. of material. <laughs> Question four. This is the big one. By the way, thank you to Jim Lyons, the Massachusetts Republican Party, the, the uh, Tea Party, 
And all of the people who went out and got, they had to get like three, I think it was 300,000, don't hold me to the number, it was like 300,000 signatures to get this on the ballot. So here's what happened. The legislature decided on their own, without asking the voters, that they were going to pass a law to give illegal aliens driver's licenses. But no, no, no. It's not just to give them driver's licenses. It's also, and I'm going to quote right from the question, it's also going to, it's going to authorize unauthorized immigrants to attend public schools, get free school meals and housing assistance, and qualify for health care services such as vaccinations and health care insurance. It says, they, but they're also not authorized to vote, claim unemployment benefits, or participate in federal programs like Medicaid or food stamps. So they, they have a ballot question. The ballot question is actually to repeal what the legislature did. The legislature gave driver's licenses and all kinds of bennies to people who broke into this country, violated our law, came here without our permission, are working illegally. And by the way, let's remember, let's go back to the whole Martha's Vineyard thing when we talked about the, the illegal aliens, when people, when we had Eunice Ziegler here during the debate, and she said, oh, no, no, Tom, illegal aliens pay taxes. Well, they may pay sales taxes if they buy something, but how did they get the money to buy it? They worked. And how did they work if they're an illegal alien? They stole a social security number. The only way to work is to work illegally under the table, in which case the employer should be in prison, or steal a social security number and work under that social security number. Either way, someone's breaking the law. Either way. Now, just to inoculate myself so I don't get 30 emails saying that I hate illegal aliens and I'm racist, I don't give a shit what your race is. If you think for a minute I give a damn about the color of your skin or what language you speak, you have not paid attention to Tom Duggan. I spend the vast majority of my time hanging out with my Latino friends in Lawrence in, in nightclubs and in, in restaurants in Lawrence, okay? This has nothing to do with being mean to illegal aliens. We know that some of them are good people. And I, I hate that I have to inoculate myself and say all of this, but people will always take your position when you're someone like me who's against having illegal aliens get driver's licenses and try and turn it into a race issue. There are illegal aliens coming here from Ireland. In fact, there's a whole bunch of them in South, in South Boston. There's a whole South, uh, illegal alien South, uh, 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 Irish population in South Boston. I want them to go home too. They're white. I'm Irish. They're Irish. They're white. I'm white. I still want them to go home. Go home and do it the right way. Go home and stand in line. There are people in Africa being tortured right now, who are on a 10-year waiting list to come to this country legally, while the southern border is wide open and millions and millions of people are streaming across the border. We have no idea who they are. We have no idea what diseases that they have. You, can't get on a, you couldn't get on a plane for two years if you didn't have a vaccine, but illegal aliens with no vaccine could just stream across the, pro, the border with no problem. So Massachusetts voted to give illegal aliens driver's licenses. The Mass GOP under Jim Lyons, thank God, went out and got the required signatures to try and repeal it. So I'm not sure how the question is asked. Let me just take a quick look on Ballotopia and see how the, how the question is actually asked, if I can. You know, I, I pulled it up and then it, it jumped on me for some reason. Okay, so well, it was there and now it's gone again. Here we go. Isn't that awful? Okay, question one, question four, changes all three. Let's get the actual question here, because I need to know whether I'm voting yes or I'm voting no. A yes vote will is to uphold House Bill 4805, which allows applicants who cannot verify citizenship or immigration status to submit certain forms of ID to obtain driver's licenses. Okay, so a vote would be so a no vote. So this is this is good. I'm glad that Jim Lyons worded it this way because usually it's the other way around. So. If you vote yes, you're in favor of illegal aliens getting driver's licenses, free health care, free education, and anything else the government's going to add on to it after this passes. By the way, at the same time, we have homeless veterans sleeping in the streets. At the same time that we're giving benefits to non-American citizens who came here illegally and are working illegally, at the same time we're doing that, People like Mike Gorman and Nancy Gorman have to go out every Wednesday night and feed Americans who are sleeping on the streets. Now, you tell me that makes sense. I was telling Chrissy before the show, on a lot of issues, on 90% of the issues, 99% of the issues, I may not agree with someone, but when you talk to them, you can at least understand where they're coming from. I have no idea where people are coming from on this because everything that the proponents of this say is just a lie. 
It's a lie. We know that it's a lie. Well, it, it's either a lie or it's irrelevant. Like you hear, I won't say which state senator said this to me because I don't want to hurt her chances of getting elected auditor. But I did talk to a state senator recently and said, you know, you campaigned against this when you first ran, and it's the issue that you won on, and now you're voting for it. And her answer was, well, Tom, but if, they're, if we don't give them licenses, they're going to drive anyway. The police chiefs all testified at the Senate saying, we want this because at least if we pull someone over, we know who they are. Well, that, all of that might be true, but it's also completely irrelevant. I mean, people rob banks anyway. Should we make a law that they can't have an alarm and they can't, they can't lock the safe? Because people rob banks anyway. We might as well make it easy for them, right? People rape children every day. Should we allow level three sex offenders to work in, in preschool daycare centers because they're going to do it anyway? No, we don't, we don't pass laws allowing people to do bad things because they're going to do it anyway. What kind of thinking is that? Like, what kind of political flaw? Where does that come from? I don't get that. What they won't tell you is what they really want is they want to make it easier. They want to make it easier to legitimize illegal aliens in this country, to make them more legitimate. And you know, and I know, by the way, you could tell I talked to Jim Scully recently. I haven't talked to him in 30 years, but that was his famous phrase when, when I was on the school committee. You know and I know how all that's going to work out. We all know it. First, they're going to get a license, and then we're going to pass a voter ID bill. And then they're going to be able to use their license to vote. And by the way, they can vote now anyway. Illegal aliens vote in every election. We know this. Anybody from Lawrence, anybody who's ever spent three seconds in Lawrence during an election knows this. We know illegal aliens who vote. I know off the top of my head, 10 people I could name right now that are illegal and who have voted. Only one got caught, by the way, of the 10 that I'm thinking of, right? So they can already vote, but this makes it easier for them to vote. Now they've got an ID, it also gives them, what, free visits to the hospital, free education. You know, I came up with an idea, and I still think it's the greatest idea in the world. When I interviewed Newt Gingrich, who was Speaker of the House, he was running for president, he gave us a 40-minute sit-down, which was great. Um, I asked him this question, and I really thought he was going to say yes, and even he said no, and that's how I knew it was a great idea. We have all these illegal aliens in this country. They register for school. They have to sign paperwork. We find out what country they're from. Send their country a bill. You show up at the emergency room and you're from Guatemala and you need heart surgery. Uh, I'm not a heartless, non-compassionate person. I say give the guy the heart surgery. But when the bill comes due, send it to Guatemala. Send it to the country of Guatemala because we're taking care of their citizens that they tax their citizens to take care of their citizens. But their citizens come here illegally against our, against our laws, against our will, and if we have to educate them, if we have to give them hospital services, I'd rather we not, but if we're going to do it, fine. But how about, let's find out, like all the kids in the Lawrence Public Schools, any of them that are here from another country and they're illegal, I don't care, Dominican Republic or any other country, how about we add up that bill and we send it back to that country? Now, the, the critics will say, well, what if they don't pay it? Well, they don't have to pay it. We send billions of dollars in aid to all of these countries. Why don't we start subtracting it from the billions of dollars of aid? And here's why Republicans and Democrats hate that idea. Because they all get kickbacks from foreign aid. All the money that all of these congressmen and all of these senators in both parties, all the money that they send to Ukraine and South America and Jordan and Egypt and all the other countries in the world they send money to, that money rarely goes where it's supposed to go because it's going to a country that's corrupt. 90% of it gets taken off the top. We all know this during the last hurricane in, in Puerto Rico. They found like 80% of the aid was like all cordoned off somewhere and the president like just literally just stole it, used the military to steal all the aid, right? So we know that when we send all this foreign money over to other countries, it goes into the hands of oligarchs, very rich people who run their country. And then those rich oligarchs all have nonprofits and non-governmental organizations, NGOs, all of whom find ways to funnel money back to the politicians that are giving the money. And it really goes where it's supposed to go. So that's it. I, I guess that's the end of the show. No. Um, 
I just had a brain fart. So when you get to be my age, it happens a lot more often yep. than you think it would. Um, so, you know, they're promoting this as though this is going to be one of those things where uh, don't worry about, just like when they said, don't worry, we're going to pass a law that you're going to have to pay a uh, $50 fine if you're not wearing your seatbelt when a cop pulls you over. But don't worry, Tom. Don't worry, members of the public. We're not going to make it a primary offense. Cops aren't going to be able to pull you over for not wearing your seatbelt. That would be horrible. And then the voters said, okay. And they passed the law. And within a year, in under a year, they pushed through a measure to make it a primary offense for police officers to pull people over for not wearing their seatbelts. It failed because people like me yelled and screamed because they didn't, had they waited a year or two years, they would have got away with it. But they got greedy and they tried to do it right away. Just like, by the way, do you remember the ballot question some 15 years ago, if you live in Massachusetts, to add a dollar or two dollars tax on cigarettes? Do you remember that? They had to do this because cigarettes cause emphysema. And emphysema is one of those things where it takes a lot of medical attention if you have emphysema. And the medical community was spending a lot of money. And insurance companies are spending a lot of money on emphysema. So we're going to tax cigarettes. And that $1 or $2 additional tax on top of what they were already taxing was going to go into a special fund to help pay for people that get emphysema from smoking. You know what they did with it a year later? They spent it. They spent it. Shamelessly, they just fucking spent it. They spent it on, they spent it on you know, bongo lessons, community development grants in Lawrence. I remember that, the bongo lessons that they got, like a $10,000 grant for bongo lessons. I'm like, are you effing kidding me with my tax money? We're going to have bongo lessons in Lawrence for community development? But this is what they do. They funnel money to cities and towns for stupid shit like bongo lessons or dancing lessons or cultural sensitivity training instead of just giving it back to the people. So on question number four, you got to vote no on question four. You've got to shove it up their ass. You've got to let these politicians know that they're not. Let me tell you something. If Massachusetts votes in favor of question, uh, votes against question four, and they let illegal aliens have driver's licenses, then I'm going to petition every single city in Massachusetts to send their illegal aliens to Martha's fucking vineyard and see how quickly that changes. Because... When, you, when you're dealing with Martha's Vineyard, the laws are a little different now, aren't they? Because they're all rich, white liberals who vote Democrat. They'll send them to Lawrence. They'll send them to Holyoke. They'll send them to Springfield. But they don't want them in Martha's Vineyard. If, they vote for, if Massachusetts voters vote for this, every illegal alien should drive to Martha's, to go all the way down to Martha's Vineyard. You could actually get your car on a ferry. It's not that... Last time I went, it was, I don't know, it was like $39 or something to get your car over to the vineyard and drive, drink as much as you want and drive around Martha's Vineyard recklessly, as, as recklessly as you want. You watch how quickly question four comes back on the ballot and they repeal it. You watch, you watch how quickly that happens. Because most of the people who push this, this idiotic stuff, is, they, they lie about why they do it. They lie about their motive for doing it. They lie about what it's going to do. And then when it happens and there's a negative effect, they walk away like, well, that's yesterday's news. I'm, I'm on to something else now. We're doing something different today. So, uh, you know, just like the, the $2 with the, with the cigarette taxes, just like the, just like the seatbelt laws, it's, it's incremental. It's death by – what's the word I'm looking for? It's death by a thousand paper cuts. That's yeah. what it is. They, they say they're going to do one thing and then they incrementally change it and change it and change it like we're all a frog in the soup. They turn the temperature up one degree at a time so you don't notice. And the next thing you know five years from now, if question one passes, we're all paying the 9% tax. And if question four passes or if question four fails, the illegal aliens are going to be driving around with driver's licenses, getting health care and getting free education. And you know that they're going to be voting. They're already voting now anyway, so what difference does it make? So my recommendations, and by the way, a lot of people watch my show totally disagree with everything I say. So you're going to be voting the opposite of what I'm saying now. But I'm voting uh, no on question one. I'm voting yes on question two. Question three, I'm leaving blank for the moment. And I'm voting yes on question three. I'm sorry. No, question four. Let's get to question four again. I want to make sure. I'm voting... No on question four. So question four, should illegal aliens have driver's licenses? The answer is no. The answer is no today, 20 years from now, 5,000 years from now, and 20,000 years from now. You know, not for anything, but we are a compassionate com country. We do want to welcome immigrants who are coming here, but we have laws for a reason. 
only we, only the American citizens, I leave you with this, only American citizens should decide who comes here and under what, what condition. Just like only you and your family should decide who can come into your house and under what conditions. It's just simple, it's just, it's, it's just simple common sense. And I'm all for, by the way, I'm all for making it easier to come here legally. There's a 10-year waiting list, make it five. There's all kinds of financial restrictions, remove them. There's no reason why someone should have to pay $10,000 and go through all, when you've got millions of people walking across the border. Make it easier for people to come here legally, close your border, and start vetting the people who are here. If you're a criminal, sorry, you gotta go home. If you stole a social security number to work, sorry, you gotta go home. Go home, apply the right way, and if we streamline making it legal for people, making it easy for people to come here legally, you won't have to wait that long. But you gotta go. You gotta go, and you gotta get in line, and you gotta do it right. Unless, unless there's the Tom Duggan, I'm gonna leave you with a joke. There's the Tom Duggan immigration plan. If you're Latino and you're female and you're between the ages of 18 and 34, you can come and you can bring all your kids with you, but baby daddy's gotta stay home. That's the Tom Duggan immigration plan. It's more women for me. Oh, you're going to make so many fans. I there. know. I, ha- I had to piss somebody <laughs> off before the end of yeah, the show. Right. So I'll be, you know, have an opinion. Tom's hurtful comment of the day. All right. You can roll up Melvin Taylor. I want to thank uh-huh. our sponsors. Who are our sponsors? I love our sponsors. We'll go backwards instead of forward this time. What do we have? Uh, we want to thank JG's Ice Cream. Love JG's Ice Cream. I may actually stop and get a frap on my way home today. Oh, they're Ple- so good. Pleasant Valley Landscaping. Make sure you give Dave Id Consoli a call if you need landscaping. He's also looking for workers. So, uh, He's the greatest. He's a great guy to work for. Take my word for it. Yep. AFC Urgent Care. A free shout out to Sullivan Insurance. Mike Sullivan, good friend of mine from Mary Lawrence. Clear Path for Veterans New England. Tomo and Shaken Seafood. Borelli's Deli, where I'm going to get my sausages after the show. EIS Investigation and Gun Training. Marsan and Sun Construction. Lazy River Products and Drake. It best cannabis in the Merrimack Valley. Best prices in the Merrimack Valley too, by the way. And McLennan Real Estate Century 21. I want to thank Chrissy, thank my you. fine, fine producer, who really does have the sexiest voice in radio. I wish she would talk more. We'll get her on the next show. I sound show. nasally today. I'm sick. That's all right. <laughs> she still sounds, sounds sexy as hell. Oh, thank you, Tom. And it sounds like Melvin Taylor says we got to go. Dave Garafalo, we're going to talk New Hampshire politics next week. And if you live in Mass, pay attention. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.